Then I came up here in uh, last year and I taught at Martin Luther King Junior High School in the city. That was pretty crazy. Because um, <laughs> it went from a suburban atmosphere to right into the right into Manhattan, right into the city. Um, I haven't seen and I hadn't like I was born in Yonkers, but I'd never spent too much time in New York. You always hear the horror stories of, you know, uh, the New York um, school system and stuff like that. So actually to be in it was a pretty quite pretty good experience. And then what happened was I live I live in Yonkers now. So I decided not to um, go back to Manhattan because it was the commute was killing me. So this is like 20 minutes from my home. So when I first got here, um, the principal, Mr. Alexander, brought me down here, showed me the room, um, which was like heaven to me because before I was teaching a tiny little classroom and doing all the same stuff I did with you guys, but in a tiny little classroom. So it was sort of a nightmare because um, I couldn't express myself or get out of the students what I really need to get out of. So when I got here, you guys allowed me to do that. And you also had an interest in film production, which was nice because it was easier to work with. And certain, certain uh, actors that I had worked with here, I feel have amazing potential and I believe should pursue this as a career because um, I've taught a thousand students and some of the top actors that I've taught came right out of the school. So. Um, what is the difference between a, fi a film teacher and an actor? All right. I'd say the biggest difference is, as a film teacher, you have to know everything. <laughs> you have to know all aspects of pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, and you have to figure it out. You have to figure out how to be able to teach it. When I first started um, the industry, I was an art major in UMass Boston, and I uh, was concentrating in film. And then I moved out to Los Angeles, and that's where I gained all my like real life experience or Hollywood experience. And I did that for four years, and I ran a production company out there as a production manager, and I got into SAG, and I started acting. And when I actually, um, when, I, when I got married um, back in 99, my wife got pregnant, and I decided to move to Florida, where my family was. So it was um, interesting to take what I had learned and have to formulate it into the curriculum. And they didn't teach you how to teach, so I was just sort of thrown into a uh, you know, pack of wolves there, and I had to come up with come up with things and make sense out of things that I had learned and try to teach it. With just acting, acting was, um, acting is like my passion. I love acting, I love transforming the characters, I love um, living in the imagination and coming up with different scenarios. I guess you can call it an escape or an art, I don't know, you know, but I use art for my own personal escape and for my own personal um, growth and creativity. So. I'd say the biggest thing between just acting and teaching it is you gotta know a lot more teaching it. You have to master it because if you're trying to teach something and uh, trust me, you guys are pretty smart. So if there's something that um, I was teaching that was wrong, I was either called on it or you know, you guys are, you know, you've been around. So you've seen television, you've seen, you've seen film and you know pretty much what's going on. And basically my job was just to sort of say, okay, the things that you saw is that's a close up. You know, I just sort of, put the vocab to it, you know, and then help open you guys up to pull out your creativity, you know. Okay, we know that you're married. Mm -hmm. How does your wife feel about your work as an actor? Well, she's an actress as well, and that's how we met. We met on a set out in Hollywood, so those uh, Hollywood stories do exist. <laughs> um, so she supports me, you know, and I support her, and a lot of times I go home and she'll go out for auditions, and I'll help her and help direct her as well. You know, and she does the same for me. So anytime I've gotten an audition, she <laughs> run lines with me as well, and uh, we just support each other and help each other. Uh, okay, coming back to the school, do you think Bronx Real Life was a good, um, a good film, or we could we could have done better than that, and why? I think that was the first project we did. I didn't know you guys, um, and originally what I wanted you guys to do was write your own screenplays. So what I had done is I collected all the screenplays and I read it, and what I decided to do was there was a lot of ideas out there um, that wanted to be explored by you guys, but it wasn't, I had, I had a, a time slot of a month because I got hooked up with Channel 68 and the producers wanted a half hour TV show in a month's time. So enable, you know, if I had to shoot all those little screenplays, probably never got done. 
So what I did is I went home, took all those ideas, and sort of channeled them into Bronx Real Life. And that's how I created different, uh, you guys actually created the characters. All I did was sort of write the storylines and go off of your scripts. Um, I feel Bronx Real Life turned out really good for, um, for what it was, you know. I think the ideas got across, I think you guys expressed yourselves. Um, as far as you guys acting and taking my direction, I don't think there was one person that didn't do what I asked to their fullest potential. So I can't ask more than that at this stage in the game, you know. And I think there's different levels to the different actors that are here. So obviously some actors got into it a little bit more than other actors, um, but what I did is you guys all sort of competed against each other, so even though you were acting that day in class, um, I would take the footage home and analyze it, and whoever actually portrayed that best character or that best moment, I would use. So I feel like I took all the best moments for Bronx Real Life, so whoever made that cut, I feel would give a very strong performance. And because of that, I feel that the show came out very good. You know, and I was, I was very pleased with how it turned out. I'd never really done a whole TV show before, just on one little set like that. In Florida, I was going around shooting on locations. Um, you know, and a lot of times we create different sets, but this one we only did it in one set. It was one room, one concept. So the focus was solely on the actors, which I feel was good because it got you guys to, uh, to come out of yourselves. And I've seen growth in a lot of students just in these last six months, you know, which, um, that's a blessing, you can't ask for more or something like that. Um, okay. Okay, so what's your um, favorite kind of movies? My favorite kind of movies? You couldn't tell, huh? <laughs> From my editing? I like horror films. Um, I don't know, I grew up on them. From a kid. I always got into them. I always had that argument with my parents, you know, because they definitely did not want that. Um, you know, growing up, we grew up in a Catholic household. Um, so, you know, that was always, a, I guess, a sort of a battle for me. Um, because I wanted to be able to watch what I wanted to watch and explore, um, if you want to call it the dark side of humanity. Um, because I feel like, I feel like a lot of times when you watch horror films, they, they deal with like deeper issues than maybe some other films, you know? And I was always the kind of person who liked to internalize things and analyze them and, and sort of figure out where they're coming from and then if they can be changed for the better, how can I, you know, maybe do that or how can uh, I see a scenario maybe in a film um, maybe somehow related to my life, you know? Um, I've been pursuing the arts my whole life. I remember the first time I ever uh, drew something, I was in fourth grade. And um, it was this picture of, uh, it was like around four in the morning, I'll never forget this. And I had this image so strong in my head of, um, it was like this computer guy, and it was like ripping out of, sort of like myself, you know? And it was like, as he was ripping out, the body was also sort of transforming into the sort of creature that was sort of ripping out. And ever since then, it was like that was, you know, I found something, you know, and that. And then like when I, w I would do a lot of meditations, and meditations, I would try to like sort of go into myself and take my experiences and, and see um, who I am as a person and how can I express myself, you know, because to me, you have to be able to express yourself. If you don't, then you'll wind up in jail, you know, because everybody's got a dark side, you know. Um, and you have to learn how to channel that and express that, you know. At the same time, like, I feel like horror and comedy are very similar um, as far as sort of setting things up, you know. In a horror film, uh, you have the anticipation built up and then you get, boom, the punchline or the scare. You know, the same things in comedy. You know, you set jokes up, set jokes up, and then, boom, you go in for the punchline, but you get the joke, you know. So it's the same sort of scenario. So in that way, I do enjoy comedy, so I obviously like, enjoy laughing and enjoying life. You know, but I would say, you know, for the most part, I find myself sort of gravitating towards thrillers, horror films, um, just to see what where people are in life, you know, and see where the, their mentality and, and states are.